So then we are back with the modern understandings from the time of the second tabernacle services where we find in the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzayelic lineage. So then you can understand the time of the end, period Shiahu the prophet. We find then the layer of understanding related with our time, time of restoration where then the cities of the Messiah laid waste for many centuries then return. Let's understand then what goes on as far as, as Daniel, the 11th chapter. We find then the Kingdom of the North, Soviet Union, Kingdom of the East, China, and Kingdom of the South, then Africa. Why do we say then Kingdom of the North and not Russia? Why do we say? Because the holy instructions taught us that the later state of the northern kingdom is higher than the first. That's why Soviet Union never changed. If you want to be technical and the world's level, you can say the name has changed. If you read the holy instructions and understand then the later status becoming then higher than the first, Soviet Union never changed. Then the understanding comes when the Chinese, also socialist, obviously making a deal with the Northern Kingdom and then becoming the manager of China. Thus then we understand the manager of the planet as far as, as the relation with then the Balian system other than the dragon. So let's understand there is no other country, neither Germany or United States or France or any other country coming against the Northern Kingdom. The Northern Kingdom at this moment has the backing of heaven. So then let's understand and humble ourselves before the instructions. So then the nations then can be saved from the near disaster of the economy coming very shortly. It is imperative then for the Northern Kingdom reminding themselves how much they have done in the past and then recuperate then their former status and then becoming above what they used to be. They have the backing of heaven. What is preventing them at the moment can be then a few factors. A lack of understanding of the holy instructions and then their own fears of the future economy. As far as we can understand from the delineation of the instructions we find the Kingdom of the North managing for the Kingdom of the East. So there is no Germany or United States or any other country coming against them. In fact, the spirit of Germany of the Second World War is absolutely profoundly entangled with the Eurozone. So the route is absolutely clear and open for the Northern Kingdom and the tasks are somewhat simple. As then the Northern Kingdom then makes a deal with China and becomes then the manager, they simply provide for them, the Chinese, then crude and natural gas. In exchange then Mr. Putin speaks with Mr. Zuma and Mr. Zuma in turn unites the African continent. He visits with the countries of the Northern area of Africa and then Mr. Zuma becomes the organizer of the Southern Kingdom. The understanding is not complicated. It's very simple. What is preventing is people get so sometimes so shocked because the understanding is so simple and sometimes people can't believe the simplicity of it. No, the situation is, it is simple. Because we are on a very simple agenda. And then, the Northern Kingdom would help tremendously our own country, United States, 
to become then responsible because thus far we have no limit. If the Northern Kingdom does not take a position as then the leader, then our country is going to get ruined. We've got a president in our country acting as a youngster with a credit card with no limit. And the people can't come against because we have elected a person for the highest position of the land. However, there is no control. There is absolutely no control. And if the Northern Kingdom does not then take on its position and starts then skirmishes, then there is no way for our economy then to recuperate. So we are dependent upon Mr. Putin's agenda. The world is eager of understanding more what's coming from the Northern Kingdom. And more so, we United States, because we are the big question mark, so as Europe. So from the Itzayelic lineage is extremely simple. So let's understand then how we subdivide Daniel, the writings of Daniel. The first section relates obviously the history of Daniel. He was then obviously sent to Babylon with his friends and they had favor before the Creator because he had a plan for the life of Daniel. He would become then the person related with the layer of the Gentile level until the ending of the age. This was the function of Daniel, mostly. He only gives a bit of glimpses of tabernacle, but it's the very end of it. Then you find the second chapter, where then Babylon was then having a king and had a dream. The big statue. So then the Creator decided of showing a statue for then the Gentile level of kingdoms starting with the king of Babylon. Why was this required? Because if you read the instructions, the people were then told to make sure they should have a yearly Shabbat for every certain amount of years. So then, the nation had owned the land for 490 years. They never kept the Holy Shabbat or the Shabbat year. So then the combination of so many years not maintaining it amounted to 70 years. That's why the nation went to exile. The land had to rest. So then Daniel the prophet then was able to show the Gentile movement of changing of leadership as then generation after generation after generation. Head of gold, then the silver, then became bronze, then became iron, then iron and clay. So then the head of gold, Babylon, then you find the Middle Persians, silver, then you find the center would be then Alexander the Great, bronze, and then you find the Roman Empire, then the legs of iron. And then the base of the statue, it is a mixing of the time of the seat with the time of the dragon. And we find then later, at the end of it, autumn feast, and then the rock coming from heaven as the Messiah returning to gather his people. Then, the base of the statue, it is a bit confusing, requires then step-by-step -step formation, so then we can relate with the base of the statue. Firstly then, starts with iron does not mix with clay. Some nations would be strong, some nations would be weak. When did it start? When then the legs of iron, Rome then, went in disrepair, or was dismantled, then became iron and clay. There was a period of time where these iron and clay would be then very evident. 
And we understand from 1009 to 2009 it was a time of deceit, no holy cities, no directives, no clear information of the instructions. So the nation, they scandalized themselves to do whatever they wanted, even to generate their own instructions where they would mix then trade and religion at the same time. Unheard of. If you understand the whole instructions, always there was a priest and a king, never mixed. So then after 2009, we've entered then the era of the dragon, no longer devil. Devil means confusion, slandering. But then confusion because of the time of deceit. After 2009, we've entered a time of the dragon, time of precision. Knowledge would increase starting then the period of the dragon. When you hear from a tradesperson, what can you understand of trade and knowledge? Computer. Then, during this time, since we are at the base of the statue, iron does not mix with clay, then you find during the time of the seat, also iron with clay. Or maybe there is another interpretation. So iron does not mix with the clay. But then you find a thousand years of the seat related with iron and clay. After 2009, we've entered then the time of the dragon. So when Galah, or Revelation, gives you then the understanding of those names of Nahashatan as serpent, devil then deceiver, destroyer, each of those they are related with a certain time in history. So when the people are reading the instructions and they understand the 20th chapter for instance and then that dragon and then the deceiver and then the destroyer because during the time of the reading Yohanna was stating already the end of it. Where then the contest comes from? The time of the autumn feast. So he's making the, a sum of the whole. But prior of this time, then we understand the relationship of the 11th chapter. Exclusively gives us the time of the restoration period yet while during the time of the iron and clay. Some say why did not the Creator then give a more understanding of the iron? But the iron were then the legs of iron. Because from the lineage of the iron the understanding of the nation that came from Rome would have a Roman, in quote, texture of what they used to be, but then mixed up with weak countries, weak areas of the world. So then we have to separate further than the time of the restoration period, because the restoration period yet is related with the base of the statue. That's where people get confused. Gentile level we are during the time of the dragon. The time of the dragon relates with the base of the statue, iron and clay. Tabernacling relates with the area of iron and clay also. But then the 11th chapter gives us the relationship with the northern kingdom, southern kingdom, and the Eastern Kingdom only. There is no West. 
And the regular scandalized scripture does not include a couple of extras chapter of Daniel. But precisely when you read the title, already gives the answer. Baal, Balian, Babylonian system versus the dragon. So then we find the dragon protected from the uncertainties of the Balian system. So let's try to understand. The Balian system comes from the time of Babylon. But then the understanding of the true scripture was then mixed up with the Babylonian during the time of the Roman Empire. But these then were dismantled. Some of the nations would be strong, some of the nations would be weak. Yet they maintained this counterized unification of the truth and the false, yet under a Balian system. However, the dragon can mix itself. Dragon is pure precision. It does not mean the Creator is not precise. But when you introduce Creator, then you understand tabernacling. That's another level. Try to understand who then Nahashtan is. The Creator said of him, he was perfect. So he has many characteristics in Nahashtan where then he has many facets. But when speaking of dragon, is pure precision, on a Gentile level, not tabernacling. So then we find the kingdom of the north, south, and east. Those are the iron of the time of the restoration period. The rest is clay. Does not mean unworthy. It's simply the Balian system is under the control. You have the dragon, always precision. Then you have a Balian system that is absolutely a piece of junk. Then the Northern Kingdom manages the Balian system. So then there is organization during this time of the trade. So when the Northern Kingdom takes on his position, then the rest of us benefit from. Because liking it or not, the Messiah said, not a layer is going to be left undone. He did not say paragraph. He did not say a word. He did not say the character of a word. He said not a layer of understanding of the instruction is going to be left undone. What we are speaking of are layers of understanding of the instructions from generation after generation after generation and these layers must be completed. So because the scriptures were then scandalized because of the influence of Rome with the true scripture became a Balian system. So then we find tabernacling, we find the dragon, and we find the Balian system. Now the situation is, the Northern Kingdom, they are going to become managers, like it or not. You know how? Any other dealings besides the Holy Instructions 
line of harmony is not going to work. What can you expect? Dealings not coming through, bad investments, bad plans, misuse of money and resources, more revolutions, and more disasters. If nations are then smart, they read the instructions. Understanding then the status of the Northern Kingdom must become higher than the first. So we must welcome the Soviet Union back in its rightful place. Liking it or not liking it. That's besides the point. Who sets the agenda? The agenda was set a long time ago. Do you know how old the instructions are? Daniel lived roughly 500 years prior of the birth of the Messiah. So some say, ah, this guy then is coming up with his own ideas. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. A person can't make up stories because it must be in harmony with the whole instructions. If any new idea comes out during the time of the restoration, then can't be restoration. It's a form of protection. As long as these understandings are in line with the instructions, then we are in harmony and solid ground. Let's evaluate then the world coming out of the thousand years of the seat and then we are then four years behind schedule. Pretty instructions we are because 2009 ended the time of the seat and we've entered the time of the dragon. <laughs> However, in any transitional time we find some similarities such as a hundred years of transition from the first tabernacle service and the second tabernacle services. That's where you get most of the scriptures from related with completion of the spring feast. Are there gospels? No, don't have that doesn't exist. What does exist is four recordings of the completion of the spring feast. A couple of them were from the set apart, a couple of them from Gentiles completion of the spring feast and then the word preparing for the autumn feast in any transitional time you are going to find then similarities of people trying to draw their strength from what they've learned so they can come up with their own plans the only problem is the instructions taught us we have then an agenda. As if then when 2009 was ended, this agenda would drop down from the skies. Giving you step by step formation. And those were from 500 years roughly before the birth of the Messiah. We've got no choice. And the only way of discovering these is the nations going against it. So if we want to find the answers, let's observe then who's going to be the first nation throwing away their resources.
watch United States is the most consumer of the planet it does not produce we have squandered our resources who's going to be the next and the next and the next and the next until we discover then the agenda No, nothing prevents, for instance, the Soviet Union to make a deal with Egypt. Nothing prevents, for instance, the Soviet Union making direct deals with Japan, with Australia, with New Zealand, or any other country. Nothing prevents, for instance, South Africa making direct deals with China, or New Zealand, or in Australia, or the United States. They are more than welcome to do it. Is that going to work? Then comes the unrelenting fear of the unknown. It is absolutely consuming. Because the instructions were given more than 2,500 years ago. And we think during these times we are smart? The only way of finding out is then let the nations do what they want. But for sure it's going to be very costly. Be prepared then make sure you have enough funding and make wrong decisions because it's going to cost. Because the Messiah said not a layer is going to be left undone. So then we find Daniel the prophet. First chapter introduction, second chapter comes the statue and then the other chapters then relates with then comes the head of gold, then the silver, comes then the bronze, and then the iron. And then the 11th chapter gives us a precise understanding of the time of the restoration along with the time of the seat. But then we must separate because then we understand the Messiah spent two days with the Samaritans in 5032. He was born in 4999. 2,000 years later becomes 7032, the very maximum. But then we find in Gala, Revelation, the 20th chapter, gives you the sum as you understand the many facets of Nahashatan. So you understand a thousand years would be granted for the Messiah and a thousand years for Nahashatan. Then comes restoration and the autumn feast. So when we layer then the thousand years for the Messiah, then you layer a thousand years of Nahashatan, then you have to understand what went on during the thousand years of Nahashatan, the seat. Then you find the city is laid a waste, a thousand and nine, then the deceit, then the cities would return. So what would be then the wisest move? There are a few areas we must understand. If you want a solid understanding of the time of the restoration regarding with the Gentile level, 
the best is making a deal then. Soviet Union makes a deal with China, receives the title of management for the Chinese government. Then it, the Soviet Union provides oil and gas. Obviously the Soviet Union becomes socialist, as they used to be. Obviously with the new management. So then the first section of the 11th chapter then is completed. The former would be reintroduced and then the second would become higher than the first. The layer is completed. Then the first understanding comes the relationship of the northern and the southern kingdom. Then Mr. Putin and Mr. Zuma. And then the skirmishes from then on, because a couple of fierce people making deals always fears them. So there is no doubt. If the Northern Kingdom wants to be as fast as they can towards their goal of becoming where they used to be and higher than previously, obviously they want it then the steps are given and instructions came from more than 2,500 years ago I wish it were mine because then you know could change a bit there and a bit there but it can't be changed then afterwards the relationship of Mr. Putin and Mr. Zuma what they're they going to do, how they're going to do, where they're going to do, when they're going to do, that's their decision. But we understand the iron or the irons, those are the decision making. Do we find West in the 11th chapter? No, it's not even mentioned. You know what this means? West, shut up. That's what it means. And the shut up means retrieving. In other words, leave the path open for those kingdoms. It's kind of a rough and crude, but, you know, a person must be simple. And then obviously a trial period of the main engine. You find the east, the north, and the south making a deal. They, their banking is already lined up. And they are. There are reports already, their banking already set up for it. It does not mean that the northern kingdom could not do other dealings with other countries. But respecting the line of understanding for harmony's sake, from the 11th chapter we find, most importantly, the relationship of North and the South. We don't find other countries. Let's say, for instance, let's talk about the BRICS. It is understandable, relates with Brazil, with the Soviet Union, with India, with China and South Africa. Understandable because we are talking about riches of these countries. However, from the instructions we find the Kingdom of the North, Kingdom of the South, and Kingdom of the East. So as a trial period would be making these engine working harmoniously. East, North, and South as if for a moment the other countries would be on standby. When the Northern Kingdom perceives a movement of funding from these engines, obviously it would go a step further.
because the same understanding that comes from the southern kingdom should be used then for Brazil and other countries. It's kind of obvious. You have a plan, you put the test, you give some time, then it works fine, then you use for the other areas. So then you can expect then after Africa then it would be South America and Central America. Because the Pacific is very much lined up already. So either Mr. Putin decides to do a relationship with Panama or then with the Pacific. Those are open for him. The instructions does not give any understanding step by step how the plans are going to work. Only gives us the outline of those kingdoms relating with each other so then an engine starts. And because of the machine already predicted then the freighters of the earth would be in charge then obviously the other countries were included. But as far as it's predicting what kind of a relationship would then the Kingdom of the North make with the rest of the countries, there is absolutely no instruction. We know there is a relationship, but from a human viewpoint, it starts with a bit, then it's tested, then comes much. But then, since Panama Canal is going to be open next year, we can perceive then a very quick understanding of the Kingdom of the North and Kingdom of the South. And then, as the engine goes on, already has then the understanding of Panama Canal. Because then China wants to do trade with the Central and South America. So then the manager obviously would focus on the Central America and South America. And lastly then would be the Pacific lining up with what they want, with the Asian market. And then at the moment as we understand, New Zealand would be the best place for a trading post of the South Pacific. And then the greatest question mark then becomes the United States in Europe. But then there is a situation with it because the world is yet using the U.S. monetary system as a means of exchange. That is a requirement for the Northern Kingdom to start up skirmishes. It is imperative. In what level, in what direction, it's absolutely in the hands of Mr. Putin. It's in his hands. But we know for sure, skirmishes must come. Otherwise the market then won't be able to function. Because our monetary system is failing. It's failing because the 11th chapter does not include the West. So let's see, study the Holy Instructions and understand primarily what we must be concerned is 11th chapter states North and South, Soviet Union and Africa, and then a couple of chapters later the dragon. So those are the main understand. As long as we are then in line with the harmony of these, then the rest of it comes by itself.
but as far as in what time is coming, how it's coming, then we must evaluate and understand the 11th chapter does not include the West. What does it mean? The West must get out of the way. And the only way of get out of the way is then lifting up skirmishes. Then the rest of it, as far as the sequence is in the hand of Mr. Putin, nobody say a word in what's the order of it, because those were not instructed. It's absolutely his discretion on how to use it. But because of the importance of the Panama Canal, then a person can understand the interest of China being the Northern Kingdom the manager, understanding then Northern Brazil with lots of minerals. It doesn't take much for a person to understand simpler ships then unloading the cargo in Panama and then from then on going to China. And then afterwards come in the Pacific and then New Zealand become the uh, southern trades post and then freighters then also taking charge of freighting and then uh, shortly after then the system becoming available for the rest of the world. So somewhere along those lines besides then the kingdom of the north, south and east then the flow could be somewhere along the line of what it was explained or similar. Please stay tuned. Much more coming up.